So it looks like we have the curveball Lone Raider active at the moment, which means... If there are any objectives, like there are on this example, to kill the hostile enclave, uh, it'll pop up with these extra little brown UI elements, which will tell you exactly what you need to do. So we need to stop the disruptions by killing the hostiles. So because this has an objective, if we go navigate over to the map, exactly like you did a few seconds ago, you can you can see the curveball goals are now in the goals list, and it'll tell you where you need to go to take out this lone raider. So you can set, you can pin that to the hood if you wanted to. Oh yeah, you don't even have to use the uh, the manual waypoint. You can actually use the official waypoint if you yeah, want to. Yeah. So if you hover over it, that's it. And press A to pin to hood. So when you come back out into the oh, is it pinned? Uh, there we go. Yep. So it's in the top right Look at now. That. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got your little marker in world. So you can follow that and then, yeah, find that lone raider and take him out. I really, really appreciate the look of that journal. Oh, I mean, it's you. it screams like state of decay. Oh, I love the analog. I mean, it's here. so analog. I love it. I, yeah. yeah, it definitely feels like kind of a callback to the original, yes. to the original state of decay. Like, state of decay two has has always had kind of this 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 sort of abstract kind of look to it. But yeah. state of decay one had. Um, had was was skeuomorphic, and actually, I should I should let the UX professional <laughs> talk, like explain to the audience what I mean when I say skeuomorphic. Yeah, so this is sort of the concept that the the thing you're trying to represents represents something in real life. So if you think about um, a shopping basket when you're shopping online, it will be represented by an actual shopping basket icon. So similar how I was mentioning before that this is called the journal. We kind of made it look like a journal with the UI elements that we've chosen. Um, and I, I know you did just mention it kind of fits in with the world of State of Decay 2, but that I did have a bit of a leg up with that because obviously you guys had already defined your whole art style and your brand. So really I just had to try and fit into your existing colour palettes and shape design. So I already had a kind of benchmark to work from uh, with the design of this screen. So yeah, I had a head start really. Well, that, well, that actually, yeah. So, so the, that kind of raises the question: like, is it is it easier as a general rule to try to, you know, uh, keep working on an existing franchise that has that stuff established, or are are there challenges to that? Like, when you know, are because you know, you could come up with ideas that just they're good ideas on their face, but they don't fit. Um, how do you sort of navigate that? Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it's it's neither easier or harder. I guess it comes. Uh, in waves really because some elements are easier like I said you already have a defined uh, art style which I just kind of have to fit into so you know when something stands out and doesn't work what? with the brand oh, <laughs> oh no uh, but in the same time you're kind of limited to the restrictions of whatever you, you've already set with either how players navigate the menu and things like that so we couldn't do anything that was different to player expectations we have to make sure it fitted in with what players wanted to play the game as so speaking of fitting in with existing things, uh, Cass, I think one, one of the more difficult things that we've asked you to do is take this big, huge, elaborate, established code base that we've been iterating on and adding new cruft onto for like five years or <laughs> seven years. I don't know how long we've been working on this game, for ages. And you've got to inherit all of that. And like, I mean, how do you even wrap your head around something like that? Yeah, um, well, when we started, we kind of created like a plan of attack, we called it. <laughs> so we just wanted to understand like all the core systems. So it was more like just um, we kind of split off and look for clues kind of thing to try and figure out like how does the missions work? How, how do the zombies like choose what they want to do? So we were just investigating for a long time. What we didn't want to do was, you know, change it so much that it didn't play like State of Decay anymore. We just wanted to look where we can hook things in, like where was the most potential we could like add difficulty or add benefits to. So um, yeah, it is a large code base, but I think we all had fun delving into it. Was the first part of that plan cry at the complexity and ridiculousness of our code base <laughs> <laughs> for like a week? No, we really did call it plan of attack though and we, we were like, you know, army helmets on diving into the trenches. So yeah, no, it was great though. We, we all had good fun. Um, and we actually use a lot of that investigation still when we're implementing more curveballs. So 
It was useful. All of it was useful. Oh, yeah, I'm switching for that. So, by the way, I, I want to highlight the amazing, amazing cheese that went into Brant's success just now. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he climbed up on the roof and fired through a tiny window. The other guy couldn't see him. Through. Hey, that's, amazing. That's, that's emergent gameplay, Jeffrey. I'll talk to you about what that means later. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, But, yeah, it's, it, it, is, it is always really a challenge to do the handoff. Like, like for instance, you know, um, last last stream I was implementing a whole bunch of traits and skills and stuff like that on the air and then I checked it in um, at the end of the day and uh, found out the next day that I had actually broken the build for all of you um, because uh, because basically you know because you know you sort of uh, you kind of made the process your own there were just a couple of little process differences where I was doing it the old way and you all are doing it the new way and I did it the old way and ruined all of your stuff uh, so I apologize for that but also but but one thing that means is I'm gonna need to go back rewind watch that video and redo all of those changes the correct way now that there's a new correct way. So those of you who, um, you know, got uh, enjoyed watching me add traits and skills and names and stuff to the game, uh, they are going to show up at some point, but definitely, definitely after the curveball update when things have calmed down and I can take the risk of checking something in without breaking the game for everybody <laughs> in, in Liverpool. So now that I've killed this guy... Yes, so... Uh, Unfortunately, <laughs> you have stumbled upon a bug here where basically the curveball lingers around a little oh. longer than it should do. Okay. It looks like it's just cleared now. Yep. Um, that is something we've already sort of looked into. So this build yeah. is a little <laughs> bit older than what we're working with back in Liverpool. <laughs> so it's interesting to see all the things that we've already fixed. 